You know, this movement is about so many things. It's about what Lanwin talked about, about drug users and fighting for just decency and justice. It's about incarceration. It's about people surviving the worst of drugs and also deriving some salvation, some help from drugs as well. You know, as somebody said before, we are about trying to reduce the cumulative pain associated both with drugs and the drug war in our society and around the world. One of the people who spoke beautifully to this issue earlier today was Marilyn Howell. Marilyn? I'm here to talk about my daughter Mara's experience with psychedelic therapy at the end of, at the end of her life. My daughter Mara experienced psychedelic therapy. I believe that her story gives us a, a glimpse of what psychedelic therapy might be in the future, in maybe 10 years, when you don't have to commit a crime of compassion in order to do it. But before I talk about that story, I want to give you a little background in what mainstream medicine offered my daughter. First, a misdiagnosis, then many months of pain, then finally she bled out, went to an emergency room, finally had the colonoscopy that she didn't have because it wasn't cost effective, and her diagnosis at that point was advanced colon cancer. Uh, she had major surgery, and her prognosis really, there was no chemotherapy that had evidence that she would live one day longer, but it works like a lottery system so that uh, a few people have their life extended and the overwhelming majority have their quality of life maximally reduced. Uh, her first chemotherapy protocol had a uh, remission rate of only one third and only 10% lived five years. And yet after that experience, she was persuaded, intimidated really, to do another protocol and another and another so that within a few months she was quite debilitated and mainstream medicine was unable to control her pain as well. No patch or pill or injection, uh, even spinal nerve blocks that uses alcohol to inject in the spinal nerve uh, didn't work. Uh, an intrathecal pump inserted in her abdomen that could send fluids directly into her cerebral spinal fluid, that didn't work. We were desperate. Fortunately, I heard about a study at Harvard McLean Hospital uh, for end-of-life patients uh, to help them reduce anxiety and depression, uh, or to find out if they could, with MDMA, which is ecstasy on the street. My daughter was far too sick to enter any clinical trial, and uh, the DEA was still making them go through hoops. But knowing that there was something out there that might alleviate her pain um, sent me on a mission. Uh, so I sent out the word to anyone I knew and eventually found an incredibly knowledgeable underground psychedelic therapist who was willing to co-therapy with me, uh, with my daughter. So over the period of the last three months of her life, uh, she had five different sessions that over time um, allowed her to finally begin to open up conversation about death, because as you know, a young person is going to fight to the very end. But um, she was very, very disturbed and worried about her dad, who could not accept her death. Two days before she died, when she was gasping for breath, her body ticking and spasming, uh, her choice at that point was, do you want to be awake and in pain, or do you want to be numbed out and asleep? But she had an opportunity. Um, to take MDMA. She knew that this was something that she could do. Uh, and in fact, in that state, it quieted her body. It restored her humanity. And at that point, she said, call dad. So her father came over, and she was able to say in his presence how beautiful it is to die with both my mother and my father here. She wanted music. She wanted us to move her limbs that couldn't be touched before because they were in so much pain. She had her last dance. And two days later, the day she died, she wanted MDMA again. But she was so sick and so close to death that after she took the MDMA, she just slept while her father and I 
sat by her side and stroked her and told stories. And then about 10 o'clock at night, I had this impulse to reach for a source of wisdom. I opened up a book by Laura Huxley uh, and a chapter uh, about her experience with Aldous Huxley when she gave him LSD before he died. And I was reading this little passage that talked about the importance of touch and voice to alleviate that desperate loneliness of death. And as I read those words, my daughter's hand came out from under the covers, reached across, she put her hand in her father's palm, turned her head to look at us with an expression of utter peace and joy and died. That was her gift to us and psychedelic healing is the gift to our family that I now am offering to you as a possibility for what may happen when we're able to offer more to our loved ones who are dying than we've been able to do before. Thank you.